Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. The island of Sardinia, part of the modern country of Italy, had an extensive history as part of the Roman Republic and later the Empire. In 237 BC, it was conquered by the Romans from the Carthaginians and remained under their control until the Vandals conquered the island sometime between AD 456 and 466. The exact date is unknown. From that time, until its reconquest by the Roman general Belisarius, Sardinia was ruled by the Vandals. Procopius of Caesarea described Sardinia as being large and flourishing, with a surface of about two-thirds of Sicily. It lies half the distance between Rome and Carthage. In AD 534, the history of Byzantine or Eastern Roman Sardinia begins with the reconquest of the island by Roman forces sent by Justinian I, Emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire, during his reconquest of Africa from the Vandals. The Vandal military presence on the island was very minor, as the Duc Cyrillus, with a force of 400 men, conquered the island and brought it back under imperial control after some 80 years of Vandal rule. Roman rule was re-established on the island except for one interruption in 551 to 552, when the Ostrogoths briefly conquered the island. I would like to thank my generous patrons for their support, and if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for more content about the late Roman and Byzantine Empire. Stay notified using the bell, and now let us continue. Sardinia was placed under the jurisdiction of the Praetorian Prefect of Africa, who was the supreme military and civil governor of everything under his command. On the island itself, a praces, based in Corallis, was placed in charge of civil affairs, and a dux, based in Forum Traiani, was responsible for military matters. Both the praces and dux were responsible to the Praetorian Prefect of Africa, to fortify the island, a series of forts were built by Justinian and were garrisoned by a Limitane force of some 1,000 to 1,500 men in total. Furthermore, a fleet was based at the harbour in Corallis. It has been suggested by the scholar Cosentino that the local officials may well have been chosen from the island's aristocracy rather than appointing foreigners except in the highest offices. An examination of Sardinian officials from the 6th century shows that none of them were Greek in origin. These Sardinian locals maintained their identity as Roman citizens into the 11th century. The language used by the administration was Greek, but the common language that would have been spoken was Latin, and eventually Sardinia developed an idiosyncratic Romance dialect. In late antiquity, Sardinia had a significant amount of trade and especially with the port of Pisa. Sardinia exported goods including galur and granite, silver, lead, grain, wine, hides, cheese, wool, and salted meat, and imported manufactured and artisanal goods. One major piece of evidence for the island's economy in the 6th century is an inscription from Donori describing customs dues introduced by the local authorities in the reign of the Emperor Morris. This stone edict, called the Gesta Civitatis Carolitanae, says, Following the municipal registers of the town of Corallis, Lacuna, under the reign of our Lord Mauritius Tiberius, Lacuna, for half of it, Lacuna, which transporting grain, Lacuna, half per animal, Lacuna, for a pannier beast transporting palms, for a load of palms as many bundles, lacuna, for someone who introduces those for trade, sheep, for twenty beasts as many pounds of meat, for such pack animals, lacuna, for peasants who introduce legumes for each basket full, a bunch, lacuna. For an animal that transports summer products for each basket full, as many pounds, lacuna. For a product in pieces for a solidus, 20 numai. For a hawker of wine, 50 pounds of such product, lacuna. For boats with grain, lacuna. 
transporting birds for 30 birds, two birds. All that, lacuna. Around Corallis, and probably in other city centres on Sardinia, there was seemingly a tax of 6% on goods, with the municipality gaining a 50% share of the revenues, which was much higher than the imperial average of one third, as established in the Theodosian Code. Concerning the religion of the island, Christianity was strongest in the city centres, with more local religions being prevalent in the countryside, slowly converting to Christianity throughout the ancient era. There was also a Jewish community in Corallis. In 594, Gregory the Great made efforts to Christianize the Sardinian population and wean them off of pagan beliefs and practices. He appealed to the aristocracy to be responsible for stopping their subordinates from worshipping statues of gods. He also congratulated the ducks of Sardinia, Zarbada, for placating the Barbaricini, the Berber population that had moved to the island, and assisting in their conversion to Christianity. Pope Gregory also contacted the ducks of the Barbaricini, exhorting him to Christianize his people. In 598, Pope Gregory asked the Bishop of Corallis to take responsibility for maintaining the fortifications of the city walls, to defend against Lombard attack, a wise precaution as Sardinia was attacked by the Lombards in the following year. Also, through Pope Gregory's intervention, the synagogue in Corallis, which had been turned into a church, was reconverted back into a synagogue. From the late 7th century onwards, the island of Sardinia was threatened by attacks from North Africa, especially once the latter had completely fallen into enemy hands. In the late 7th century, the late Walter Kaigi identified in the Apocalypse of pseudo methodius that Sardinia, probably Albia, was attacked by the warriors of Islam. After this, Moorish attacks on Sardinia continued, According to Islamic sources, Sardinia was attacked repeatedly in the early 8th century, in AD 703 to 704, 705 to 706, 707 to 708, and then the island was struck again in 710 to 711. It was attacked during the reign of Leo III in 732 and 735, and again under Constantine V in 752. It was no coincidence that this large and prosperous island was attacked so frequently. As a Byzantine province, it helped fuel the empire's defences, and its devastation would aid the Umayyads as they tried with all their strength to destroy the empire. When Constans II moved his court to Syracuse on Sicily, he instituted several policies to better defend the empire from attack. The Liber Pontificalis says, he imposed such afflictions on the people, occupiers and proprietors of the provinces of Calabria, Sicily, Africa, and Sardinia for years on end, by registrations of land and persons, and by imposts on shipping, as had never before been seen, and such as even to separate wives from their husbands and sons from their parents, so much else unheard of, did they suffer that no one expected to survive. They even took away all the sacred vessels and equipment from God's holy churches, leaving nothing behind. These policies, or afflictions, were a census for the introduction of the capnicon, or hearth tax, that each household had to pay. Tariffs on shipping and the confiscation of precious objects, likely to melt down into money, as well as what would seem to be the introduction of conscription, with husbands and sons being dragooned into some sort of service called norticatio, indicates a vast reorganisation of the resources and finances of the area with the administrative framework of a census to support it. Zuckerman identified this as the introduction of the resources needed to create the Carabiciani, the professional navy of the Byzantine Empire, created some time after the Battle of the Masts in AD 652, that was in service during the 7th and 8th centuries. It is within this context of Sardinia 
and the rest of the Western Mediterranean provinces of the Eastern Roman Empire, being used to fund and man naval forces that demonstrates why the Arabs were so keen to attack and disrupt Sardinia during this time. There is a mention of Sardinia in the Iussio of Justinian II that he sent to the Pope in AD 687. He mentioned Sardinia amongst all of the other armies of the empire. Interestingly, Justinian II mentions Sardinia's military forces as being separate from Italy or Africa. But then he brought in our most holy fathers and most blessed patriarchs along with the representative of your holiness and the most holy senate, and also the metropolitans, bishops, beloved of God, who are residing here in the imperial city, and then the soldiers who are stationed in the sacred palace, and also some members of the popular guilds and excubitors, and even certain members from the armies, beloved by God, from the Orient, from the Phraxian, and similarly from the Armenian, also from the army of Italy, then from among the Carabisiani and Septensiani, that is from Sardinia, and from the African army, who had come to our piety. The Iussio probably indicates that by 687, Sardinia was an independent command, perhaps created by Constance II and his afflictions. There are three seals dated to the late 8th and 9th century from Sardinia, one of the Hypatos and Duke Theodotus, and two of Archontes of Corallis. The presence of Archons may reflect some of the obscure military and administrative changes that took place on the island in the 7th century. In 752, with the last of the Saracen raids on the island, the Sardinians had to pay the jizya, the Islamic tax on non-Islamic peoples in exchange for protection. The tribute worked, as the island would not be attacked again by the Arabs until the 9th century. After the 752 raid, Sardinia also seems to have had some Arabs settle on the island, which is evidenced by finding Saracen copper coins there, which were not used in long-term trade, but rather local commerce. Furthermore, an 11th century Kufic inscription was found in Asimini, perhaps indicating that this is where their settlement was. The towns of Arbatas and Algero derive from the Arabic Arbatash and Algar. However, the exact nature or extent of an Arab settlement on Sardinia is unknown due to a lack of evidence. In the 9th century, renewed Saracen attacks began with the rise of the Abglibids in Tunisia, and the Umayyads in Spain. In 807, the Moors attacked the island, and again in 809. In 813, the Moors attacked for the third time, and a fourth in 816 to 817. The raids continued in 821 to 822, but after this, they ceased their rampage against the island until 934 to 35. At least no known attacks are recorded for the intervening 112 years. One reason to stop attacking Sardinia was because the Aglabids concentrated their forces against the Roman theme of Sicily, eventually resulting in the conquest of the island. The Umayyads came to an agreement with the Eastern Roman Empire to work together to check the Abbasid Caliphate. Ibn Qudadibur, writing in 840 to 845 in his geography, lists Sardinia amongst the empire's provinces, saying, the patricians of the Romans are always twelve in number, six of whom reside in Constantinople, the others in the provinces. Those in the provinces are the patrician of Amoria, the patrician of Ancyra, the patrician of Armeniacon, the patrician of Thrace, located behind Constantinople on the Bulgarian side, the patrician of Sicily, a great island and a vast kingdom opposite Africa, the patrician of Sardinia, who governs all the islands of the sea. On the other hand, the Archon of Sardinia is not mentioned in the 9th century list of precedents, called the Uspensky Tacticon, but Ibn Qadadeba's work is based on an Arab account of the administration of the Byzantine Empire. This perhaps reflects how the Byzantines considered the island part of their empire, not an essential part of their court in the 9th century. Ibn Qadadeba's evidence 
explains why the Umayyad Caliphate in Cordoba would resist the urge for cheeky raids against his ally, since Sardinia was perceived in the Islamic world to be a province of no lesser significance than the others in the Eastern Roman Empire. The raid on Sardinia in 934-935 was the only recorded attack on the island by the Saracens, and it was perpetrated by the Fatimids. In 934, the Fatimid fleet, led by Mugiyahid al-Amiri, sailed to Genoa and sacked it. On their return, they invaded Sardinia and tried to conquer it. At first, they successfully secured much of the island, and Mugiyahid ruled over his domain for several months before an army of largely Pisan and Genoese soldiers drove Mugiyahid out of Sardinia. Kufic inscriptions from Cagliari, Olbia, and Assimini suggests that Arabs continued to live on the island even after Mugiyahid's enterprise. The attack in 934-935 was the last known attack on Sardinia while it was under Eastern Roman control. In AD 698, the fall of Byzantine Africa to the invasions of the Muslim Arabs caused many refugees to flee to Sardinia. Even before this event, the devastation of the province and its increasing imperilment caused a stream of African Roman officials, clergy, landowners and refugees to flee to the island. As time went on, Latin Sardinia experienced an element of Hellenization due to the prolonged significant presence of the Eastern Romans. Cosentino has linked the beginning of the Hellenization to the large-scale migration of Roman refugees to the island in the late 7th century. The islanders themselves all spoke Latin and had done since the 3rd century BC. However, Greek words also appear in the linguistic fields of proper names in history, place and geographic names, the names for things, and the rural economy. The ducks and consul Constantine in the Turis Libisonis inscription, which is dated to either the reign of Constans II, Constantine IV, or Constantine V, the latter being the most recently argued date, commissioned a Greek inscription to commemorate his victory over a Lombard attack on Sardinia. It is now preserved on an architrave in the church of St. Gavino. It says... May the emperor and the fortune of the Romans be victorious. The only triumphator, you, lord of the whole world and destroyer of the Lombard enemies and other barbarians, while a double storm shook the state and ships and weapons of barbarians were drawn against the Romans. Constantine, you brave, being armed with the wisdom of your power, gave your subjects the divine word which cheers up the cosmos, so that now Constantine, the most excellent consul and ducks, can offer you, lord of the whole earth, the symbols of victory, the downfall of the tyrannical race of Lombards and of other barbarian peoples who dared to bring their weapons against your subjected island of Sardinia. It reveals several of the standard Roman epigraphic tropes from late antiquity and Byzantine political ideology, demonstrating the persistence of Byzantine culture on Sardinia even after the large losses of territory in the 7th century and Sardinia becoming the western extremity of the empire. More local powers could get involved with the island's affairs. For instance, in 720, the Lombard king Liutprand went to considerable expense to have the remains of St. Augustine of Hippo removed from Sardinia and transferred to Pavia to protect them from Saracen attacks. After the initial Muslim conquests of the 7th century, the Eastern Roman Empire had to rethink how it treated its western provinces, which were now its furthest frontiers. Sardinia being even more of a distant frontier than even Venice, the Crimea, or Sicily. Sicily and Calabria were administered directly by Constantinople as strategii and then themes during the 7th to 11th centuries. Northern Italy remained under the jurisdiction of the Exarch of Ravenna until it was extinguished by the Lombards in 751. 
The Ducates of Venetia, Naples, Dalmatia, and Sardinia had different fates. Dalmatia was later brought into much closer imperial control and administration, becoming an archontate like Crete during the reign of Nikiforus I. The other three had very ambiguous positions in the empire. Nominally, they were under imperial control, but had considerable political autonomy. The aristocracy of Sardinia eagerly sought titles bestowed from Constantinople, because they had no other way of legitimizing their authority, despite their much looser position in the empire. Sardinia, as well as Naples and Venetia, also imitated the heavily prescribed court dress of the empire. Dates in documents included the year of the current emperor's reign. The style of coins minted and their denominations were similar to the Byzantines, as well as artistic fashion. Eastern Roman emperors also wanted to maintain their authority over Sardinia and the other ducates. They were determined to make sure that these pieces of imperial territory were not swallowed up by the forces or influences of the new kingdoms and empires around them. The Carolingian Empire, the Abbasid Empire, and the Bulgar Khanate. In the 8th and 9th centuries, the Imperial Roman navy continued to come and go between Byzantine Sicily and Sardinia. In AD 873, Pope John VIII wrote a letter to the Prince of Sardinia alluding to Byzantine merchants coming from the local provinces to Sardinia to sell slaves. In 931, a Byzantine fleet attacked the Muslim outpost of Fraxinatum in southern France. In 942, Liadprand, in his Antipodosis, says, High King Hugh, having now collected his army, sent a fleet to cross the Gulf of Lyon to Fraxinatum and proceeded thither himself by land. As soon as the Greeks arrived, they destroyed the Saracens' ships with their fire. Moreover, the king forced his way into Fraxinatum and compelled the Saracens to retreat to Moore's Mountain. Cosentino suggests that these naval expeditions originated from Sardinia, with imperial fleets operating so far to the west after the fall of Sicily. They would have either come from Sardinia or Calabria, and even if they came from Calabria, then they would have likely stopped off at Sardinia to resupply. On Sardinia itself, it has been considered by scholars that the island was effectively divided into four lordships ruled by Eudices all of which nominally under imperial authority. This is based upon letters sent to the island by Popes Leo IV and John VIII, and a mention in the annals of the kings of the Franks that mention an embassy to Louis the Pious from the Sardinians requesting aid to defend the island from Moorish attacks. However, it is possible that the future breakup of the island into four regions ruled by a Eudex is anachronistic for its earlier history. In the 10th century, Constantine VII detailed how to compose a letter to the Archon of Sardinia, which the Emperor referred to as his governor, implying that relations were maintained between the island and Constantinople into the 10th century. A further inference is that the Emperor considered the ruler of Sardinia to be his subject, and the Emperor viewed the island as having a single overlord. This was not just theory. Inscriptions written in Greek have been discovered from the churches of St. John and St. Peter in Asimini, St. Antiochus in Sulcis, and St. Sophia in Decimoputsu, dating to the late 10th to 11th centuries. The inscription of St. John's at Asimini mentions a certain Torquitorius was Archon of Sardinia. The inscription from St. Sophia's of Decimoputsu mentions the same Torquitorius as Basilikos Protospatharios, and Seleucius, his son, is honoured as Archon. While not proof that Sardinia was as much a Roman province as the Opsicion, it does show that even by the turn of the second millennium, Sardinia was still part of the Byzantine Commonwealth. The archaeological, ciliographic, and literary sources indicate that some aspect of Sardinia's Roman constitution remained, which should add considerable doubt to the idea that once direct Byzantine control of the island lessened, the Eudices suddenly seized control of parts of Sardinia. 
The island of Sardinia was under the religious jurisdiction of the See of Rome, and remained so throughout its history. However, many aspects of Constantinopolitan church practice was employed by the Byzantine Sardinians. For example, for the 116 churches mentioned in our sources in the 11th and 12th centuries, 28 of these were dedicated to Eastern saints including St. George, St. Nicholas, St. Helias, St. Michael, St. Barbara, St. Sophia, St. Caterina, St. Demetrius, St. Hysileus, St. Julian, St. Quiricius, St. Quiricus, and St. Sergius. Furthermore, from the names of the churches in other sources, St. Constantine, St. Helen, St. Sophia, St. Basil, St. Procopius, and St. Theodore were also venerated on Sardinia. It would imply these churches, the centre of a town or village's spiritual community, were quite willing to venerate saints that were commonly venerated in the Eastern Roman Empire, as well as their own saints and the universally important Christian figures. On the 14th of October, 1073, Pope Gregory VII sent a letter to Sardinia, which is the first concrete evidence for the island being divided into four separate lordships. This establishes a terminus post quem for the end of Byzantine Sardinia being ruled by an archon or patrician under the authority of the emperor in Constantinople. The Eudices continued to use the Greek alphabet for official documents, though the actual language being used was Sardinian, and their seals continued to follow a Byzantine formula, such as a deed by Constantinus Seleucius in 1089. The Eudices continued to use these Byzantine symbols to legitimise their power. However, although we can talk about when the rule of the four Eudices can be confirmed to have started, and the legacy of Byzantine Sardinia on them, there is insufficient evidence to tell us when the island left the authority of the Byzantine Empire. What we can say is that the loss of Sardinia as a suzerain happened during the Eastern Roman Empire's own collapse, losing Italy, Armenia, and much of Anatolia. Sardinia should likely also be added to this list. While the history of Byzantine Sardinia is somewhat obscure, it remained culturally connected to the Byzantine Empire for the whole of the early Middle Ages, and the ghost of its legacy continued afterwards. It was a major hub for trade, regardless of the Moorish raids in the area. It was also a centre for some military operations. Sardinia was a fairly wealthy region with significant supplies of wood, grain, ore and salt. It could even send luxury clothes and soldiers to help the Pope. The economy of the island was monetized from the 6th to 9th centuries, with many Byzantine coins being found on the island, and the solidus continued to be considered the coin of counting until the 13th century, before it was replaced by the currencies of Genoa and Pisa. All of these achievements are impressive for the Byzantine Empire's westernmost frontier. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more history about the Eastern Roman Empire. I would like to thank my generous patrons for all of their support, and this has been Eastern Roman History. Music